So when we talk about this testing, you know, how is this testing done? Is it required on tissue? I know liquid biopsies have been a big, you know, part of the conversation over the last several years. Um, is, is tissue still considered the gold standard? Um, if so, when does the liquid biopsy become um, a relevant diagnostic? Liquid biopsies are a critical aspect of the diagnostic algorithm for patients with lung cancer. Uh, and um, what this is, is essentially technology that can pick DNA up in the bloodstream. And what we've learned about lung cancer, and a lot of tumors for that matter, is when tumors grow, they shed cells and they shed DNA into the bloodstream. And if you have technology to do next generation sequencing, genetic testing off the tissue, you can apply that same technology if you were able to capture that same DNA that's shed from the tumor in the blood. And so we now have FDA approval just two weeks ago, this is how fast it's moving, uh, to use liquid biopsies for patients with non-small cell lung cancer. And I could go on and on about liquid biopsy. So Daniel, you're gonna to have to just pump the brakes on me when you're ready for me to stop. Because <laughs> it's really where we have made such incredible strides in diagnosis for lung cancer. The bottom line is, is that if you just do a tissue biopsy on a patient, even in an ideal world, even in the, the ivory towers of academic centers, it's not a perfect system. And unfortunately, when you send that tissue off to have molecular profiling done, you're going to miss genes sometimes for many reasons. One is that you may not have procured enough tissue when you did the biopsy, even with a good interventional radiologist or uh, our, our interventional pulmonologist. Two, there's something called tissue stewardship, which means that once the biopsy is taken, they cut it up into slices, and oftentimes you lose content that can be tested for. So there's a lot of reasons that even in a perfect system, when you do a biopsy, uh, it won't always yield you all the information you need. And then if you look now, here comes liquid, and liquid can supplement the testing from tissue. It essentially is an insurance policy in my mind that you're able to capture the genetic alteration of interest that may be missed in tissue or you may find it in tissue as well. The bottom line, is if you look at lung cancer patients, a fair amount of lung cancer patients, and you're to do a tissue biopsy and a liquid biopsy at the same time on the patient, the first thing is number one, the gene that you find in the blood is the same gene you find in the tissue. That happens about 90% of the time. That's intuitive because the tumor is shedding DNA in the blood. You would expect the same result from the blood test as you did the tissue test. More importantly, however, if you look at those patients who do both blood and tissue, the blood will add, it will essentially enable capture of more mutations that were missed in the tissue and increases your yield or chance of identifying that mutation. So in my mind, it's the insurance policy. Uh, and we do it on every single patient who walks through the door, every lung cancer patient who walks through the door who's had a tissue biopsy, even if the results aren't back from that tissue biopsy as it relates to the genetic testing, we also do a liquid biopsy, a blood test. And that's for all the reasons I explained. And in addition, the results of a blood biopsy take around five to seven, seven business days. It's incredible. Uh, and we you, you compare that to the results of how long it takes in a tissue biopsy, the results for genetic testing for tissue biopsy take around at our center, sadly, around 28 days. So you're talking about more a rapid test, it's accurate, uh, and it can often find mutations that were missed in tissue. Now, one small thing I wanna say about blood is that blood is not perfect. Uh, while if you find a mutation in blood, it's true. It's, there's no such thing as a false positive. And I always tell residents and fellows, blood is truth. If you find the mutation in blood, it's accurate. You can act on it. But if you don't find anything in the blood, it could still be in the tissue. So a blood test by itself is not the best way to go. You need to do both on patients again, because we have too many genes of interest now where we can deliver targeted therapies and we need to make sure we capture them. And if tissue is imperfect, we have another platform that can ensure or at least aid in the detection of some of these genes of interest.